what's going on guys today we're going to talk about the inverted yield curve and how jobs 430,000 jobs were produced in the month of march and i'm going to tell you why that's not something to cheer about first of all what is an inverted yield curve our united states government sells bonds and the two-year treasury note yield which is the interest rate that the bonds pay actually is paying a higher interest rate than the 10-year treasury note that's what it means when um, the bond curve the yield curve inverts now it has been a pretty strong predictor of recessions when the yield curve inverts does it always predict in a recession no it doesn't the yield curve inverted in 2019 and we did not have a recession however let me tell you why I think that we're going to have a recession in 2023. Let's talk about the jobs. Unemployment is at 3.6% and it produced a lot of jobs. And as I drive around, I've noticed that virtually every restaurant, every McDonald's, every Arby's, every Burger King has a help wanted sign. So the majority of these jobs are trash jobs. These are jobs that have no upward mobility. They're what I like to call dead end jobs. And we have an economy that is producing a ton of dead end jobs. Now, why is this bad? All right, let's take real estate. The majority of these jobs that were produced in March could not enable a person to afford a house. That's not really good. And even though the economy is producing more jobs and the unemployment rate is 3.6, we're still going to have a recession because real marketplace forces are starting to enter the mix. On my last video talking about the foreclosure crisis, a lot of people were confused. They was like, why are these people going in foreclosure? Just sell your house with the current more you know housing situation going on first of all why are these people not selling their house because they did a HELOC now what is a HELOC a HELOC is a home equity loan where you use the equity in your home to get an additional mortgage so to speak so I feel that the reason a lot of these people are going into foreclosure is they don't have any equity they're underwater in their house even though the housing market is going bananas i want you to really think about that and a lot of these people have arms adjustable rate mortgages so like i said two years ago and this is one of the reasons that i'm doing home economics the preparatory course before you start a business because here's the thing the average person doesn't know what to do with money. Notice what I said. The average person doesn't know what to do with money. I didn't say a lot of money. I said money. The average person tricks off their job income. The average person, um, there was many years ago, they asked this lottery winner. I think he won $3 million, $4 million. And they asked him what he was going to do with the money. And this guy said, I'm going to get hookers and I'm going to get blow. So he's going to spend the money on hookers. He's going to spend the money on blow. Nothing. Th this is represent representative of how the um, average person treats money. Like if I won the lottery, let's say I played the lottery and I won. And let's say I won $100 million. I would not spend, I would spend probably $5 million And I would take $95 million and I would buy apartment complexes and then earn millions of dollars a year off of that investment and never touch the principal. That's what I would do. But one of the things that <clears throat> I forget, and I, let's talk about this for a second. When I sit here, and this is one of the reasons that I've changed the direction of the channel, is most of you have never seen six figures. We're not even gonna to get to seven figures. We're gonna just leave it at six figures. Most of you have never seen 
an annual income of $250,000 or $300,000 a year. And this is something that I forget, and this is one of the reasons that I have um, changed the perspective and changed the information and changed the channel lineup and the content that I put out because so many people have never seen I'm gonna call it a substantial sum of money in their life. They haven't seen it. And I remember years and years ago, when I was living in the West End, this girl's grandmother died and left her like $500,000. She went through that money in six months. She bought the BMW. I remember the BMW, I remember the day she got it, she was riding around the neighborhood. She was dating a local drug dealer. That car looked like crap four months later and I heard that she had went through the money she had partied she had, she had went through five hundred thousand dollars in six months and this is why so many people are going through foreclosure during that time when you did not have to pay your mortgage due to the forbearance I would say there was some who's like, hey, I'm just gonna take this money. There are some people who took their mortgage money and put it in some type of investment and they made money and these people are not being foreclosed on because they have money. But this was a very, very small percentage of the people. The average person abused that money. It's like, hey, I want to pay my mortgage. Let's take a trip. Let's do this, let's do that. And one of the things that I forget, and sometimes I just sit down and make a video without thinking about the impact, thinking about, because I read the comments, and a lot of you are putting out some really good comments, and I am seeing that I am actually speaking to most of you. There are some people Every video I feel like I'm being talked down to. Let me tell you why you feel like that. Because you're stupid. <laughs> I'm just going to say it because you're stupid. Uh, intelligent people. And salute to the nerd tribe. Salute to the nerd gang. Um, they get it. I see it in the comments. They get it. And one of the reasons that we're going to have a recession is... Americans don't make a lot of money going back to this economy is producing more jobs but they're producing trash jobs they're producing crappy jobs when I, I put up the video talking about the young man that I know I actually looked it up what he's going to do is become an ethical hacker and they go from 168 to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year so he was spot on when he was like, he rolled up in the Apple at 150. 150. Apple has ethical hackers on staff to hack their systems because they need them. They need hackers so they can build better systems. And I'm going somewhere with this. The, going back to that lottery winner, he did not have the presence of mind to take that large substantial amount of money and put it in investments he said what he was going to do hookers and blow he was going to be self-indulgent he was going to trick off on the money that's what he was going to do and this is what the average person does when they get some money there's this trucking channel that i watch just trucking the trucking channel blew up it's a trucker I think his name is Justin. It's him, his wife, they have three little boys. And his wife, she's blonde, blue eyed with huge rack. And I remember when he was just taking off, there was one video where he put her in the thumbnail and that video got like 100,000 views. And they've been off to the races. Uh, their YouTube income is like 10,000 a month. And what have they done? Are they investing that money? No, they're not. They have bought several cars. 
He's got this project where he's fixing up this old car. He's rebuilding this engine. They're just spending this money. So here is someone who's a truck driver who was making really good money. And now they started a YouTube channel and started making about, I'm going to say they probably do 10 to 12,000 a month on top of his trucking money, on top of his trucking money. And they're spending, 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 spending. This is what the average person do. This is why I have a video on the House of Pain talking about why you got to be financially strange to get ahead. And this is one of the reasons that, you know, let me go ahead and lay out the reasons we're going to have a recession. The inverted yield curve has nothing to do with my analysis of a recession. It's all this other nasty stuff. Number one, the economy is producing trash jobs. Long term is producing jobs. People who get an income where they can't really participate in the economy. They can participate on the basic level of housing and going to the grocery store and buying gas, but they can't really participate in the housing market because they don't make enough money. Number two, China. We've got some deep issues with China. China is, we're going to have a supply chain shortage. Now, why would a supply chain shortage start a recession? Good question. If you, I'm going to tell you a story. Years and years ago, when I was in the storage auction business, I would get these units, which I would call immaculate units. These were units that literally everything in there I could sell everything. I could sell the furniture, I could sell the clothes, and this stuff would, would move so quick. It would move so quick. And I could buy this unit on Monday and sell everything by Friday. That was what I call an immaculate unit, which was not normal to get these type of units. And once I ran out of that stuff, then I would have to go to selling the regular units which could take anywhere from a month to three months to sell everything because it was normal everyday stuff. But I had a month where I bought like five immaculate units. And this was the month that I had my highest uh, pay. I made 50,000 that month. We did 100,000 that month, 50,000 for me, 50,000 for my partner. And after those immaculate units disappeared, our sales just went they went back to normal. See, when you can't get what you need to make money, it creates a recession in your business. So this supply chain shortage has some ramifications that are, have yet to be felt. We get ingredients to make medicine from China. We get so much from China, it's ridiculous. So. The supply chain issue is really, really a problem. And the longer it persists, because like right now, I have two cars in the mechanics waiting on parts, waiting on parts. They've been there many months waiting on parts. So I'm sitting here, I have two assets. If I was still to rent them out, I couldn't make money with these assets because they're just sitting there waiting for parts. So I want you to think of the numerous industries, the numerous um, demographics that are literally sitting around waiting for parts. It's dead money. They're not making any money. Let's say you you're a trucker and your truck break down and that your truck is your lifeline and you need a part that's made in China and you gotta wait two months for that part. So your truck is down for two months. Now. I want you to think about this in all of these little industries, all of these little situations where people are sitting around waiting on parts. They're effectively not making any money. And as this supply chain issue gets bigger and bigger, it's not getting right now. Those cargo ships that I talked about last year in videos, they're still off the coast of California. They're still off the coast of California. So the cargo ship thing, is getting worse and worse and worse and it all starts with China now because we cannot get stuff from China this is going to create recessionary pressure over here and because China cannot sell stuff and China doesn't get money from us 
it creates a recession there. So you, you, you see how it goes? So that's the stuff that I'm looking at. You know, the inverted yield curve is hit or miss, but I do believe 2023, we will be in a recession because of the supply chain issue, because of the number of trash jobs that are being produced. And there's something else too. So many people, let's go back to the great resignation. That's still going on. You have people who are quitting their jobs and don't have another job. So all of these things, supply chain, trash jobs, lack of people to fulfill jobs, uh, the housing, we, we, we have so many signals that say recession outside of an inverted yield curve. And one of the things that I'm really looking at is crime. Crime is spiking. I didn't look it up. I'm gonna look it up after this video. I want to see what the domestic abuse rate is right now. Because once, you know what, matter of fact, hold on. I'm about to go look that up. Glad I looked that up. Domestic abuse has increased 33% globally. Not just here in the United States. This increased 33% here in the United States, but it has increased around the world. Now, what does this mean? Literally, people in every country are experiencing extreme stress. And that's one of the signals that I use to indicate that we're gonna be in a recession. Why are all these men beating up their wives? Why are all of these women getting beat up? Why are some men being beat up? Why is homosexual domestic violence increasing? In every category, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, <clears throat> domestic violence is escalating across the globe. Why are all these people so stressed? Uh, I can never ever think of a time when I was married that I came home and I was so stressed that I wanted to beat my wife. It never happened. It never, I never got that stressed out. Now, one of the things is I was operating during the Bill Clinton environment when you wanted to get a, work, a job, you wanted to work, there was a job for everybody. Uh, a good job too. But why are all these people stressed? Why is domestic violence spiraling out of control? Why is violent crime spiraling out of control? See, if the economy was healthy and people were doing well, domestic violence would be down. Crime, violent crime would be down. Every day, uh, how many of you are familiar with nextdoor.com? It's something, they've expanded it. Now, it used to be you could only get it if you lived in that particular neighborhood and they had you had to sign in, they had to send a postcard to your address in that neighborhood and you would just see what would happen in locally. It's expanded. Every day, on there, I see criminal acts every day. Someone broke into my car, someone broke into my house, someone was walking around my house. This is going up. So if the economy was good, as indicated by this 3.6 unemployment rate, why are women getting their wig split? Why are people, why, why, is, why is crime spiraling out of control? Why is, like, a friend of mine told me someone broke into her car and, you know, she just did her police report over the phone. She said they didn't even come out and check the car. I was like, I'm going to tell you what, it, it was a low-level crime because there was no violence. Like, if you had been assaulted, they would have came out. But right now, police resources are going toward violent crimes. And they don't have the resources to deal with non-violent crimes in the manner that they once did. So if the economy was so good, why do we have all this domestic abuse? Why do we have all this crime? What, 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 what? That, that's, see, that's one of the things like, you know, a lot of people uh, look at me and I will tell you, because I have met people, it's like, how did you get the numbers that 80% of people in America make $35,000 a year? I will tell you the methodology that I used. First thing I did is I Googled all of the jobs, average jobs, and I Googled their salaries. It took me a couple of hours. 
and I crunched the numbers. See, what many of you are looking for is this deep analytical data fed to you by the Google machine. Like take average household, average, average income. You can go to the Google machine and put in average income and what it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you household income. So if you wanna do deep analytical research, you gotta find the raw numbers and you gotta crunch the numbers to come up with the analysis that I come up with because you're not gonna find it in a neat, solid little package on Google. If I started a blog, you would find that information on that blog. And that's something I may do in the future because a lot of you are spoon fed a lot of information and many of you are not accustomed to digging because this is one of the things I have to dig for this data because it's not it's not topical level of Google. I actually have to get the raw numbers. I have to crunch the numbers. I actually have to bring out the calculator, calculator and look at stuff and do probability. You know, I, I actually have to do some work to come up with these stats because um, once again, if you were to do, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Go ahead and Google. Now, this is one of the things you got to Google what Uber drivers make. You got to Google what agriculture that's farm workers make. You have to Google what state and federal employees, federal employees make way more money than state employees. Average state employee makes about 32 to 35,000. And you gotta Google all this stuff. And once you Google it, and then also you've got to Google how many people have a full-time job. I can tell you it's 129 million and we have like 34 million people who have part-time jobs. So it's not going to be in a neat little bundle or package. You've got to be able to do the research and crunch the numbers. And this is what I do. And this is why, yes, unemployment is 3.6%. Yes, there's the economy is producing a bunch of trash jobs that do not enable people. And this is something that said someone said that Henry Ford was brilliant. When Henry Ford was producing the Model T, the factory workers on the assembly line were paid a wage where they could afford a Model T. What's happening in this economy is we have a bunch of trash jobs that, I mean, seriously, that people can work very hard to work 40, 40 plus hours a week and barely make it. That long term is not good. It's not good for the economy. It's not good for the housing market. It's not good for nothing. So that's one of the things that I look in because, you know, we're going to probably see this year where the economy is going to cre keep creating these trash jobs. And it's going to be like, yeah, yeah, the unemployment rate's really low. But we're going to have some dude who's working a trash job who's going to be pissed off. He's going to be tired. He's going to be irritable. He's going to go home and his wife is going to say the wrong thing to him and he's going to punch her. And we're going to have another act of domestic of violence. And this woman is she ain't going to see it coming. She ain't going to see it coming because her husband, because once again, this thing has been building, it's been building, it's been building. And he's going to come home after working 40 plus hours and there's not enough money. And she's just going to say something, not even anything serious. She's not going to even pick a fight. She's just going to say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Then pow, he's going to go off. And depending upon his temperament, he's going to punch her once or he's just going to keep punching her until her face looks like a red, messy, bloody pope. Because he is walking on stress, even though he has a job even though he's working really, really hard. And this is why I predict that we're gonna have a recession next year, 2023. All these factors that I keep looking at, you know, cause like, you know, I, a lot of people here on YouTube who would say the word, we may have a recession. And I will actually go on record and say, we are gonna have a recession. And I, I see it in the comments, it's like, no one can predict the recession, no one. 
Actually, there have been many people who have predicted recessions. Remember the story of the guy who predicted the housing recession and he shorted the housing market and made billions? He predicted it. So there's a lot of people who are doing the hard numbers crunching, looking at the raw data, who are coming to similar analysis that I am. Because, um, you know, it's funny. I was watching this one channel and he's an investor channel and he was talking about how the press comes up with all this stuff to scare investors and stuff. So, you know, I, I found it to be interesting because when the market was crashing, <laughs> I didn't watch his channel. I don't know what he's talking about. But there is um, agendas here on YouTube. And if someone has a YouTube channel that talks about investing and they're going to like ignore the yield curve, just keep buying, just keep buying, just keep buying. I guarantee you, if you follow their money, you will see that they're in line with someone that's paying the money to give them this advice. I don't have a hand up my back. I don't have a hand up my back. So yeah, the, the yield curve inverted, but that's just a small, small part of the puzzle. And the puzzle is looking really, really bad. It's looking really, really bad. So let me know your thoughts and opinions, and I will see you guys in the next one.